Hi, welcome back to the Corona Learning Series. My name is Diego Cordero and I'm the BI Lead and Data Strategist at Profusion. Today we'll be looking at how to create a currency conversion switch using SciSense blocks and some other SciSense features. So here's what you'll need, which is a data model with a currency table, and which I'll show you in a bit. And mine, in, in my case, it's split by date. Uh, you need to add the currency rate to the formulas on the widgets that you want to, to, to change with the switch. You also need a filter for unique currency names uh, column, so I'll show you that in a bit as well. As well as the blocks switch template will be, that will be provided along this tutorial. And the custom JavaScript code on the switches uh, script editor. This will be provided as well and I'll show you how to edit it for your use case. So let's jump to the demo now. Here's our, our Waka metrics dashboards with a currency converter switch. It displays sales data for avocados in the US uh, and it's, uh, it has different three types of avocados, small, large and extra large has. And you can see here that we have split by region, by, uh, by type and by date. And, but this is all in US dollars. If I wanted to present this to our CEO, Natalie, and want to convince her if it's worth investing in avocados, probably it needs to be in British pounds. So I've added here a great British pound switch. And when we click it, now we have all our prices, all our sales in British pounds. And how, how do we achieve this? First of all, the data model. Here we have our currency table which we had open, which is the most important one. Uh, these dates are that are covering the dates that are ranged here, which is early 2015 to early 2018. And we have four columns, the rate, uh, the date, the rate, the current base currency and the conversion currency. And uh, it is important to mention that the dates that you see here are duplicated uh, again below the like after great british pound we have us dollars so if i filter here for us dollars we have the dates again so basically we have two sets of dates with one for each currency and you can see that the rate here is one because they were using this as a multiplier in the formulas and the rest of the columns are more uh, standard columns, uh, standard uh, tables, sorry, that you would use in SciSense. So these are avocado table with all the data from the avocados. This is another custom table that I created from this table, just to split by type. And this is a unique date from this table, which I'm using as a filter. These are all uh, optional, and this will probably depend on your use case. Uh, but it's important to have your currency rates table here. And this was created, by the way, in, in Google Spreadsheets. Uh, there's a formula out there that you can use to create these conversions and you can uh, set a range date and it will create those uh, rates automatically for you. So let's go to our back to our dashboard where we have our switch. Uh, by default, it uh, is in US dollars and now we're going to see how we've added this to our form formulas here in our widgets. So we take, for example, our indicator. We have the average of the average price. I will never recommend to average an average, but in this case, it's, uh, we don't have a, uh, this is already aggregated. So um, I definitely, the number probably is wrong, but in the, just for the sake of it, we're averaging the average. And we need to mu multiply that by the rate. Now, in this case, I'm using a max rate uh, and not the sum or the average. It, it would be the same to use the average, but I'm using the max because here we have duplicated dates so that we have many dates which basically make the rate multiply by itself um, or as many times as the dates appear. So if we have uh, if we have one here for dollars and the date appears three times, you will see by times three. So we don't want that. We just want the max. And it's worth mentioning that in my data model, all these numbers are, uh, 
with the filter of the, with the date filter and the currency filter i get just the same number many times so i can get a max i can get an average i can get the mean because they are all the same number but not the sum because it will just sum all of them um so if i take this out you can see that it's the same number because it's multiplying it by one but i'm just going to cancel to not save that and that's the same case for all of my charts here i've added the same uh, rate to my formulas here um, and, and as it's the same for these two charts now uh, now we've seen how to, if we go back to our presentation we've seen the model how to add those currency rate to the formulas and let's talk about the filter now so in the filter here we can see uh, this is the unique uh, names that we have here so this is U this is this column here which has great great british pounds and us dollars um, and this is the the filter that will be affected by our switch and we have also added the date filter but that's just uh, for my use case and this will only depend on if you have a date as well so now let's see the blocks template in our blocks template we have one text block which is the title and this is optional and then we have a container that has a column set with three columns one for the US dollar uh, title one for British pound title and the middle column is our switch now this text block is actually the container of the button which is the one that moves and the text within the text block is the actual switch that moves so you can see here the background color is gray um, and the height and the width correspond to that of the background as well as the radius border radius of 10 which makes it rounder so if you wanted a square one you could do that but in my case I want a round switch and now the text with it's an HTML that creates this circle which has border uh, sorry box shadow it has gradient and it has um, different uh, styles to, to make it look better but a very important bit here is the transition which is uh, what makes it move smoothly so that's for the style uh, for that switch but we have more style here at the top and this is so that when I hover it it changes color the other bit is when I add a class active via JavaScript, it changes the color to green and it also moves the circle to the right side. Um, so that's the blocks template. And now we're going to see the JavaScript behind this. So if we click edit script, we can see that it's this function gets triggered whenever I click the switch so that is ID switch here it's something important to add in your template because that uh, triggers this function and what it does uh, if we break it down here it toggles the class active in the switch and the switch button so in both this element it adds a new class here as active like that and what it does here it adds the class active here as well so at the end it looks like this whenever you click it and so what the script does is to toggle the class active in the in the switch and the switch button and then it runs an if statement that checks whether the switch button is active or not if it is it goes through all um, the filters in our dashboard so as I showed you these ones here it goes through those filters it finds uh, the one corresponding to our column co called cur conversion currency in this case and this is where you would change the, the number of the column and it changes the filter to GBP so it selects this one programmatically and then updates the filter with this function here. 
And this is also where you could change the, your desired currency. If you have euros or if you have any other currency, you can change it there. And now um, what it does, it goes through all the widgets. It checks if they have a title and because what I did was adding a title to those uh, filters um, to, so, sorry, to those widgets that, uh, that I want to, the currency to be changed. Uh, it is worth mentioning that although you don't see the title here, it does have a title, average value. And what I did was to choose to hide the title bar so you don't see the title, but it does have it. So the code actually gets it. Um, you could maybe if, uh, if you could, you could add another function here that if it, the title is other than nothing, and it contains com to be converted or it um, it contains price then go through those uh, widgets as well um, you can also choose not to but I, I would encourage to uh, to try to filter the widgets down because yeah the, it makes the, the script a bit more efficient so after getting those those widgets that do have a title it goes through the metadata of the wi of the widget so what it does is checking the panels here. Um, panel, so for each panel, it checks that the name is values. So it gets this here. Uh, or value, in some cases it's called value. It's just being more robust. So it's either value or values. And then uh, it checks if it's undefined. So the, checking that it actually has a value. And when finding the values, uh, it goes through, through the values and che check if it, th those have a mask of currency. So the mask is this one that you see here. In this case, this one house. And what it does is changes that mask to pounds in this case. And at the end, it just refreshes the, the widget. So we're what we're doing with the JavaScript is changing the filter and uh, changing the symbol in our charts and refreshing the widgets. And if it's not active what it does it does the same thing but with us dollars so it's um as it's it's very it looks very complicated but it's not actually that complex and the, the, but this will be provided to you uh, along with this tutorial so that is how we create a custom currency converter switch so um, thank you for watching and I'm looking forward for, to see all the use cases and how you use this, um, this template and this custom uh, script. So hopefully you enjoyed this and thank you.